Hello, my name is Carson. Dude, what the heck do I do? <gasps> the music industry right now is only carried by TikTok. I can't, you know, make a hit without like selling my soul to the TikTok gods. <laughs> Carson, congrats. You are a new and upcoming artist on TikTok after yes. multiple of your TikTok videos with the talk box went viral. Yeah. But not a lot of people know you from TikTok, mm. especially your success story and a little bit about you. So let's get to mm. know you today. Let's start off by sharing what your life was like about two years ago. So two years ago is kind of where I started and I pretty much, uh, I started playing piano in church since fifth grade until pretty much my senior year every weekend. And then that kind of stemmed from, so playing every weekend there and then throughout the week I would play gigs and stuff like that. And I was primarily a keyboard player and uh, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to be, you know, the keyboardist for Ariana Grande or mm, Khalid mm. or whatever. And then since whenever COVID hit is kind of when I started doing TikTok. And that was when I, I discovered this one instrument through this guy named Adam on TikTok. And so I saw him doing this video of him doing a cover of this J. Cole song, uh, Workout. And I watched that video and I was like, that, that was the moment I was like, I want that instrument. And I've seen it before. And so I bought a talk box. And then literally like my second video is the one that like kind of pushed my... Mm -hmm my uh my account and uh so my second video ever was the one of doja cat's say so why don't you say so didn't even notice no punches what's wrong with it? you guys are here before you said you want to say so and like over the next week i think it got like 40 50 million views or something like stupid and so, uh, so yeah, I guess that's the origin story of me. <laughs> I think a lot of people didn't know about the talk box until we saw you on TikTok. Right. So that was pretty cool. Tell us about maybe, um, especially most artists and musicians starting off in the industry, uh, start off with small budgets to no mm. budgets, be right. broke. Um, what was your financial situation two years ago and how has that changed and evolved with TikTok? Totally. Um, I think like my financial situation is like everything I knew about getting money and stuff like that is just out the window and most of the stuff I'm doing right now, I mean, I think I'm, I'm doing pretty good. I have enough to, you know, support myself and, uh, you know, pay for music videos and stuff mm -hmm. like that. I'm really big into like keyboards, obviously. So equipment. I, yeah, yeah, totally. So I definitely buy a lot of uh, keyboards that I really don't need, but that's like <laughs> the splurge that yeah. I do with the, the sponsorship stuff. So you mentioned that you had an old way of uh, thinking or you said that my old, you know, strategy, yeah, whatever totally. didn't work. What was that specifically? For the longest time before really social media started to like blow up, the way to make money as a musician is to play gigs every night. Mm -hmm. So you would play like a four hour set at this like really dingy jazz club or whatever. And you'd make like 20 bucks and a gumball or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> like, and uh, you know, now it's just like, you have this power in your phone to just like do what you want to do and like create something that gives a voice for other people. And uh, you know, that's like the dopest thing ever. <laughs> like I, uh, I'm so obsessed with that. So we have had influencers and YouTubers, uh, artists, actors on our show, and most influencers around your following count make about $3,000 per post around there. Is that something that you start off with? Is that something that maybe others can also be like, wow, this is sick because this mm. is real income coming in from, from yeah. these kind of TikToks, from these ads. Mm. I actually can make money off of this as well. Oh, yeah, I mean, especially, yeah, I mean, I can say right now that I'm for a, like a sponsored post, I make more than that. And it's so easy to do. You can like be a brand friendly account and like make your brands like, I don't know, like work with your content. So like I did a, I did a partnership with like another music company and I, I mean, I'm a musician. Mm -hmm. So I like, I wrote like a bunch of jingles for them 
And that's like, if you're a musician, yeah. you can like license that and make more money off of a song that's like an original right. piece. So they're paying for it to be on your account, but Plus, also to license it. Right. So now Carson's actually going to take us behind the scenes into the magic that he creates that we don't understand. Um, and we're really going to talk about how th this thing stays in his mouth, how this process works. So first, Carson, tell us the talk box. Is it well used? Is it, do we hear it ever? I mean, you hear it on like the super popular records like uh, the song Levitating with Dua Lipa has it. I got you, moonlight, you're my starlight, I need you all night. Butter by BTS has it. Ooh. We've got Bruno Mars, Kendrick Lamar, Tupac, everyone. Uh, it's like a cool little texture that you can hear sometimes in songs. And if you really listen to those songs, then you'll know it, what the talk box sounds like and you can't unhear it. Yeah. How did you reach out and end up collaborating with 24 Karat Golden? Oh yes, the homie mm. of all homies. Why you always in the mood? Fuck around like I'm brand new. I ain't trying to tell you what to do. Uh, so what was happening is his manager, his social media manager was like, hey, you know, we're coming to Chicago. Uh, on tour, you want to come hang out at the Airbnb, let's go shopping, let's do whatever, come to the show. And then I get there and it's like me and like a few other influencers. They're all hanging out, doing whatever. And then me and Golden just getting this like really like introspective conversation just out of nowhere. And he's just like the coolest dude I've ever met. And we were just chilling and then he was like, hey, we should like do the thing where like I, I play the talk box and then you can like teach me how to do it. I was trying to teach him his own songs, but on the talk box mm -hmm. and it's like surprisingly difficult to like make it sound good. And so dude, he was getting so, <laughs> Not he was getting so mad. He was like, dude, why can't I get this to work? And I was like teaching him everything to do. I'm sure if you tried it, it would be like, no diss to you. No, I'm it sure like, it would be trash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's super very, it's very awkward to yeah. try at first. How was your collaboration with Jason Derulo? So he messaged me on Instagram. He said, hey, bro, let's do a video, period. <laughs> so I was like, first of all, I was like, holy crap, it's Jason Derulo. And then afterwards, I looked at the text. I was like, what the heck? <laughs> and then he sent me a video of him singing a cappella, like in his pool or something like that. <laughs> he sent me a video of him singing, uh, whenever you're ready, whenever you're ready. Yeah, one. that song. Uh, I don't know what the name of it is, but yeah. he sent me a video of him doing that acapella and then he sends it over. He's like, all right, do your thing. And I was like, okay. And I was like, this is going to be so easy. And then I start like learning the keys underneath him and he sings the whole thing like uh, half of a half step. So it's like in this key that doesn't exist. <laughs> so it's like, I get this video back. I'm like, dude, what the heck do I do? <gasps> And now I'm like freaking out. I'm like, dude, this is Jason Derulo. It's gotta be yeah. like- And you can't ask him for another one. <laughs> I, I like, I talked to him. I was like, I was thinking about being like, dude, you gotta like use a pitch pipe or something <laughs> to like sing it. But I'm not gonna tell him to like sing it better. Hey Jason, can you, uh, <laughs> can you re-record that please? That wasn't as good as I wanted to be. Literally. So like, I, I spend like the next like hour or two like tuning my piano. I like, and to like get the pitches right. And then I sent it back to him like, hey man, piece of cake, I sent it back. <laughs> I was like, it took me like way too long to do like a simple pop cover. Let's have Carson sing uh, to us a Let's song without the talk box. Okay. And then with the talk box, then we'll see the difference that, okay. that it does. Uh, Okay. Uh, now I don't know where to go. These days I find myself alone. And then here's what it sounds like, like this. Now I don't know where to go. These days I find myself alone. Something okay. like that. That sounds... That's such a huge difference. That sounds yeah, right. so cool. Sounds like we already saw a finished product with right. a song that's auto-tuned. Yeah. What is different between auto-tune and the talk box? So with auto-tune, you're letting the computer change the way your vocals sound. 
whereas this, you're actually not singing anything when you're when you're playing the talk box and you're playing the notes. So you're influencing your voice with the synth. Let's actually break that down okay. even more because one thing I didn't know when I was watching your videos until I did some more research is that you're not actually singing into the tube. Nope. He is literally just breathing or talking. Uh, I'm just, I'm not even talking. I'm just, so for that song is, uh, what you're really doing is only accenting the consonants. So uh -huh. no vowels. So it'll be. So, so that's, he's just breathing and then on the parts that you want to make them yeah, yeah. Stand out, you're putting that emphasis. Yeah. So if I were to say like um, disconnected on on Talkbox, it would sound like Disc Does that wow. make sense? He's like breathing. He's not even singing. So if, if here's what it sounds like with with me playing is disconnected or Disc Disc. What if you sing into the Talkbox? Nothing happened. It's the same. Disconnected. Oh, you can hear your voice. Yeah, right. What do you think? Uh, since you're a musician, you're really talented. You have many years of experience in this area. It's your second language. Yep. What do you think of TikTok celebrities who are becoming artists, mm. music artists? Oh, yeah. Singing and making tracks happen, singles. What is your opinion on all that? Yeah, I think there are definitely some people who cannot do it. For sure. And I appreciate the effort that they, they, <laughs> they seem to put in. But I think like uh, music isn't something that you should bash. I, ha I definitely have some favorites like uh, Bella Porch. Mm -hmm. I think she's dope. Her music is really good. Lil Huddy, his music is fire. I think his stuff is so dope, which is kind of crazy because I, I, I wouldn't expect like his stuff to be really good. Yeah. And then like Nessa Barrett, she, yeah. she has some pretty good stuff. Yeah, but I think some people do it just to like make money, obviously, kind of like a cash grab, which is cool. I mean, get your bag, but music to me, I think is so much more than like than money, I guess. It's like such a vulnerable thing that's like your art. It's like a piece of mm -hmm. you. And, you know, when it doesn't feel like a piece of you, that's when it's like I get disconnected from it. I'm just mm -hmm. like, you know, you do your thing, but mm -hmm. I'm going to mm -hmm. I'm not a fan, I guess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How do you rate your vo vocal skills? Um, how do I rate them? Yeah, if you had to rate them. No, I'm not very good. I think my vocals are a work in progress. It's definitely one of those things where, like I was saying with, with Golden, like he's so talented in this one area, but it, it doesn't translate to other stuff, but he knows what he wants, mm. but it's not coming out. That's kind of like with my vocals. Like I want it to be so good and I'm just not that good. So I like try and stay away from my vocals just because I have uh, better talents elsewhere that could be utilized to fit like a certain section, I guess. How do you work on your skills, your vocal skills today? Um, the classic, uh, go on YouTube and look up 10 minute vocal warm ups. That's my, that's my <laughs> jam. It's, I mean, I don't know if I'm doing it right, but that's what some dude told me. I played this one this one club gig that went to like two in the morning and I was like, dude, how do you sing so good? He's like, bro, go on YouTube, man. And I was like, okay. Going off of vocals, do you think auto-tune is cheating? I don't think auto-tune is cheating. I mean, everyone does it. Like every single artist that you listen to has auto-tune, probably except for Adele, I think. You don't think she does? I'm pretty sure like I watched an interview with her producer and he was like, yeah, I don't use auto-tune. Oh, and John Mayer. I know he doesn't. Oh, okay. But, uh, yeah, every single person. Other than those two, <laughs> they all use autotune. It's like if we record this interview with like, with uh, like really bad mics yeah. versus and really good it. mics. Yeah. It's like um, you're just making it sound that much cleaner. And it's not cheating because the audio is sounds better. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Well, for me, what, it, what this reminds me of is like uh, when girls put on makeup. Oh, it's got like, you. You know? Is yeah, that I cheating? Mean, yeah, and <laughs> you like know? you can wear makeup yeah. to like express yourself or like right. you can like make this Yeah, like... make different kinds of looks. Totally. So same thing with autotune and on the songs. Yeah, I never thought about it like yeah. that. That's good. It's kind of the way I'm looking at <laughs> it. Yeah, yeah. That's good. Dang. I'm going to use that. <laughs> I'm going to steal that. Right. And it's good. like are you cheating if you have that on? It's like, I don't you know, think so. you know, same thing with yeah. music, so it's yeah, part, right. part of the art.
cool. Let's talk about uh, your childhood, where you grew yeah. up. Um, tell us how your childhood was, how your childhood was growing up. Um, where, what were you surrounded by? Yeah. Um, so I grew up in the suburbs of Chicago. So I live like 45 minutes away from downtown. And uh, yeah, I have my parents and then my two siblings who are both older than me. Mm -hmm. And they were really into uh, video games mm -hmm. at the time. And so was I. And I like, I, I fell in love with the music from video games. And that's like kind of what started my whole thing. And I have like, uh, like this tattoo is from like, Show him. this is like the first song I learned on piano and it's from uh, my favorite game of all time. Sick. And so, uh, what's your favorite game of all time? Uh, it's like Smash? a Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time. Okay. It's like a classic, but uh, I, none of my parents are like musicians or anything like that. Like my dad plays a little piano and uh, I guess I just kind of picked it up from, I made one friend in high school who's like the best musician I know right now mm -hmm. his uh his name's danny shout out to you danny me and him we like grew up playing music at the same time we like tried to like it was like almost a competition of who was like a better musician <laughs> so we would like go back and forth and uh that was like my whole childhood was trying to be better than him <laughs> at, at music childhood explained oh totally it was kind of like our escape from high school i guess it was just coming home always knowing that you can like just shred on mm -hmm. your instrument and that was like the, the thing that brought the most joy definitely to me uh throughout those years and i don't really care i'm not like uh i'm not like a big school guy like i said like uh school isn't like really my thing so i, I guess i didn't really care enough like for my my senior year uh my prom like i didn't go i like stayed home and practiced piano <laughs> like that was that was like my thing because yeah. i was just like i really want to get good at this that was like all i thought about pretty much uh yeah, I think it, it paid off, so I'll take it. <laughs> yeah. Were you confident in your uh, looks growing up? I thought I looked really cool, but like looking back on my pictures, I was like, dude, I'm such an idiot. <laughs> like my freshman year of high school, I like really wanted to look cool, so I bought these like really like loud sneakers and then wore like ripped skinny jeans and then I dyed my hair like bright red, kind of like this shirt. <laughs> like, dude, like bright red. And, uh, <laughs> Yeah, it was so ugly, and I thought it was so dope, and uh, yeah, I look back on that, I'm like, dude, you're such an idiot, like, uh, but I, I thought I looked cool, like, my style was definitely, like, trying to be, like, a skater with, I, all I know how to do is, like, do an ollie on a skateboard, so I'm kind of like a poser, I guess. Next question that I had watching you perform on TikTok and other videos how do you keep the tube in your mouth without falling? Sure, so pretty much you have the tube and then you pretty much, you, uh, you put it in like- Are you biting on it? Yeah, you're like biting on it and it like hits the back of your molars. So like, if you, you can do it like this, like if you hold it like yeah. this, like uh, you can hear that I can't, you can't understand anything I'm saying. Like, right. If I talk like this, it's like I have a lift. But if I talk like this, you can hear it clearer. Yeah. And it's the same thing. It translates to hello, everybody. Versus, like, if I hold it Do like it. this, hello, everybody. Yeah, it's you know not as clear. Yeah, versus, oh, hello, my name is Carson. Does your jaw hurt after recording? <laughs> the consequences share those yeah so i think at first it was so awkward that it, like it hurt my mouth a little bit where it's like if there's this thing in your mouth that it's so not used to like having a a tube in your mouth obviously and then i guess it's like maybe a callus or something uh -huh. that like built up so i like Muscle. don't feel it anymore yeah but uh th maybe there's like a technique that goes along with it but i don't feel it when i do it it's like kind of just second nature which feels weird because yeah. it looks so not second nature well for with carson it looks very natural right uh, because you've used it for so long is do you think are you do, do you use it on one side only i only yeah left side do you think that side is getting bigger with the muscles growing <laughs> yeah. by any chance maybe i'll get like a jawline on this side <laughs> just only. on the side jawline yeah so um that's funny next question that we see under the comment section um all the time is how do you clean it? Do you clean it at all? This <laughs> magical tube, how does that happen? So yes, it's actually very simple. So you pretty much, 
I what I do is I I fill up my bathtub with water, obviously, and then I put like Lysol dish soap uh-huh. in there, and I just kind of stir it around, and then put the tube in, and then just let it do its thing for like a couple hours, and then take it out. I I think I do that like once a week or something. Okay, like that, once a week. Depending on how much you use it, but right. there's some nasty people out there who do not wash their talk box tubes. I'm looking at you. We're talking to you right now. Wash your tubes, though. Wash your tubes. For with- the one other talk boxer who's watching this video, <laughs> wash your dang tubes. <laughs> Carson, what helped you build confidence growing up? Honestly, like my talents, I think in music, like really carried my my self confidence for a long time. It was just like, you can hate the way I look, or you can whatever, but like I'm so good at this one thing. Like, I'm not, like, like to me, I'm, like, good at this one thing. So, like, it's the one thing I can really bounce back on. So, like, if I get comments, like, the comments, thank God they don't really, like, affect me that much. Where it's, like, you can, like, hate my hairstyle or, like, my face. But, like, I am good at this one thing that I really care about. And that's the only thing that matters to me, I guess. So, it's just, like, having confidence in something you're good at or something you really care about that like no one can really push you away from this one thing. We're gonna go into your childhood a little bit more. Okay. Share a story of your first childhood experience with like a crush uh, okay. or something like that. My first experience with a crush, it was in sixth grade and this one girl that I really liked, we, uh, we only talked on Kick Messenger and I was like too scared to talk to her but I would like text her all the time and be like, hey, you're so, you look so cute today, I wish we, like that when we hugged today, that was awesome. It's like so stupid. The side hugs. Yeah, right. And so that was definitely my first experience. And then everyone at the school was like, "Oh, dude, that's your girlfriend!" Like making fun of me. And I was just like, "This is so stupid." And then after a while, I like, I texted her on Kick, obviously, because that's where we communicated. I was just like, "Hey, it's over." I think that's what I said. Why? Because I was just like, it like. People were making fun of me, and then I was just like, this is so stupid. It was just like, I was, I like, di- I wasn't ready, obviously. I was in like sixth grade. <laughs> do, do you still keep in contact with any of your, of like, from elementary school or anything like that? No shot. School? No. Like, uh, I, I think she, the girl in sixth grade, she transferred schools like huh? really fast. <laughs> after after you and I broke up with her. I don't know if it was me, it was just, <laughs> but, and I, I was probably like so embarrassed to talk to her. And then I just, I cut it all off, I guess. I'm a, uh, You left her heart cold, broken. Yeah, yeah, heartbroken. <laughs> yeah. What was your experience now going forward with alcohol or drugs? Did you ever go through any phases like that? So I definitely did not have a party phase. I'm not like, I'm a pretty introverted guy. So I didn't really go to parties too often, but I definitely did smoke a lot of weed my senior year. And then, uh, but then I stopped because it, it gave me too much anxiety and I was just like, you know, it's not my thing. So I was just like, you yeah, know, I'm going to chill out on this. I did it for like a month and then I stopped. Did it help your creativity with uh, music or no? <laughs> I thought I was so good when I, when I did. When I was high and I would play piano, I was like, dude, I'm so good. And then I would watch back the recording of me and I was just so bad. <laughs> like, it was, it was definitely... Uh, not a not a great time. It was a train wreck, to say the least. Were your parents more strict or lenient when they were uh, raising you growing up? They weren't like super strict, but they definitely come from like a Christian background. So they very uh, like all the Christian ideals are like built into my childhood, I guess. And uh, so in that sense, they were strict. But like in other sense, like hey, like I can go you know, do something and be home at a certain time. And that was pretty fine. And they're super supportive of like my music career, which is like, I'm so grateful for. And they've always like believed in that, which is super dope. And I know a lot of people aren't fortunate enough to have that. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, I'm super, they were super lenient with that. And my dad's really cool about that because he's like a, uh, he's like an independent. He like started his own business doing like similar kind of stuff that I do. Like, he's in the production world, so he does, like, audio, video mm-hmm. lighting for different live events. Mm. And so he knows, like, the creative life. Yeah. So he's, like, really built that into me that, like, 
hey, I'm going to do this thing that I really love. I'm going to be really good at it, and I'm going to make it work, like, regardless of what happens. So, yeah. <laughs> what was your reaction when you chose to pursue music? Was it pretty positive? Since um, I don't know if there was, like, a moment where I, like, I'm going to do this, but it was just, like, I kept practicing, and I kept gigging everywhere, and I kept talking about it all the time, and I think they just knew that I wanted to do that. I think that's like the only thing I cared about for so long and still the only thing I really yeah. do care about. And uh, they, they are just like so, so great about that kind of stuff. So Are they supportive today? Oh, totally. They, my mom, uh, uh, I was her number one artist on her Spotify <laughs> rap thing. Oh, that, was, uh, that was really sweet. She's like my biggest fan. Yeah. So I appreciate that. Definitely. Uh, it's definitely a little weird for them because they're like come from like a traditional music background. Uh -huh. So like hearing like the talk box and like all the synths and stuff like that, they're like, I don't know. <laughs> but I'm trying to get them to like it for to sure. Like it. <laughs> yeah. um, after blowing up on TikTok and being a full-time creator, do you see anything that has changed in your personal life with fans that are girls DMing you? <laughs> uh, uh, anything, anybody approaching you? Um, share yeah. a little bit about that. Um, definitely the, the DMs are my favorite part about the whole thing. Uh -huh. I think it's so funny, like, the <laughs> DMs that I get. Sure. Just like, hey, like, I know what school you went to, like, do you want to hang out? I'm like, no. <laughs> so, like, the DMs are always a mystical place. Like, every time I open them, there's always some, like, crazy person. And it's, like, the best thing ever. <laughs> I think they're so funny. But then you get, like, the really sweet fans who, like, are super supportive and, and uh, the fan interaction is pretty funny. Like I get recognized in some weird spots. One time I got recognized, I was like biking through this forest preserve through like these mountains. And I was like all sweaty. It was like, <laughs> I was doing it for like three hours. I was going in and this one like little girl came up to me and she was like, hey, I know who you are. And I was like, dude, I am like, I, I cannot take a picture right now. Like I'm so <laughs> ugly. And then she was like, right after I thought that in my She's head, she was like, can I take Can a, I have picture? a picture? <laughs> so bad. <laughs> Another question for those who want to maybe, they're like, wow, this is so fun, I need to buy one, just like one of our videographers um, <laughs> mentioned, yeah, just watching him perform. Do you need to know how to play the piano? Probably want to play piano a little bit because that's like, you're just playing the piano. You Keyboard, know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, yeah, you might want to know a little bit, but literally like some of the most famous talk box people, they don't know like music theory or anything like that. They just like do it and they have like the feel. But yeah, I mean, if you try to do a whole song like on one note, it's just, you might not want to do that. <laughs> but, you might not want to buy one in the first place. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> Let me save you a couple hundred dollars. Yeah. Don't do that. Yeah. How long does it take you to learn? The talk box. Um, so before I posted my first video, I've been, I was doing it for about like two weeks mm -hmm. or something like that, but I've been doing keyboard stuff for like my whole life. So, uh, but the pronunciation is so weird and getting used to the feeling. If I had like an extra tube, I would like let you try, uh -huh. but it's, um, it's very weird to get used to, but, uh, the more you do it, obviously the better you get. And, uh, it's always a process. In one of your Instagram posts, uh, you talked about anxiety and how it's something that you've been working through in your life. Um, yep. Would you be able to share um, when it started for you, what that looks like? Because I'm sure those who are listening and everybody in life does um, deal with that totally. at one point. Uh, I mean, like right now, I'll be straight up. I'm like super anxious right now, like doing stuff like this or traveling. I have anxiety and and hanging out with people, I have anxiety just everywhere. It's just, uh, it kind of started like a couple of years ago where it's just like, uh, I got really stage fright on stage, which is crazy because mm -hmm. like I've been doing it for so long, but like one gig I had, I just like froze up on stage. Everything started like spinning. And I was just like, dude, what is happening? And it kept on going. It was just like sucked. And then I like had, I got like diagnosed with like anxiety disorder and, uh, like I have like a lot of like frequent panic attacks and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And it's just like, uh, yeah, it just sucks. What was the point in your anxiety when you were like, I want to turn this around and I need to look for help? For like two or three months, I, I was in bed the whole time. And this was last July. Mm. It was just like, I'm fine with being sad. I'm just, 
at the same time, like, I'm just not going to do anything, and that's okay, which is just, like, not what I really think. It's just, like, what my brain is mm. thinking, I guess. I think I genuinely wanted to start getting my life back together maybe, like, last December or something mm. like that. Do you think that was a, a sort of a depression? Oh, totally. I couldn't, I couldn't, like, get out of bed without having a panic attack. Like, it was, I was having, like, four or five a day or something like that, which is just, like, I don't wish that on anyone. Mm. Yeah, and then... I think it was, I got off the phone with one of my best friends and he was like, hey man, we should just hang out sometime. Not like, hey man, feel better or like, why don't you hang out with me anymore? It was just like, hey, we should like see each other sometime. Mm -hmm. And then that one moment, it was my first time out of the house. And it was like one of my favorite nights mm. ever. We like shot a music video for fun and we hung out all night and it was like the best thing ever. Ever since then, it was just like, once I got out of the house and I could, like, could have fun, it was just like, you know, this anxiety stuff doesn't control me. Like I can still do these certain yeah. things, realizing that I have more control than my brain. It's like, if you're physically in a different place, then like your brain can't stop your legs from moving, I mm. guess. What has helped your anxiety? Um, what do you do when you're feeling in or going through it? Yeah, so I think something I definitely do is, so this, is this in the, in the shot? Mm. <laughs> So this tattoo is like a, it's a five, five, seven. So it's like a, like a breathing pattern, I guess. Mm. So to calm your heart rate, you, it's like inhale for five, hold for five, exhale for seven. And it's like something to like slow your heart rate down. And mm. like, you can like trick your brain to stop being anxious by lowering your heart rate. Mm. And so I learned that through like my therapist. So I go to therapy. I do, uh, I stopped drinking caffeine. That mm. was a hard one. And uh, like just sitting in my room and like meditating, stuff like that. Obviously, write music. Like, so I guess to get more. No, go can ahead. I get? Love okay. it. We love it. So, uh, my most violent panic attack, I ended up going to the hospital. I was like hooked up to all this stuff, and they were like, hey, you probably have like some disorder or whatever. And I was like, dude, this is so stupid. I hate this. I hate myself. And then right after that, I went home. Like the night I came back from the hospital, I wrote this song. That's like my favorite song I've ever written, period. The song's called Panic, really original name. Writing something or writing something down and making it an art piece kind of takes the power away from it. Mm. So writing has been like a big escape where I can like take a really hard situation and turn it into something beautiful. Let's talk about music. Let's talk Let's about do the music it. industry. Let's get out of this anxiety stuff. Um, Olivia Rodrigo with Driver License, Abigail Barlow with Heartbreak Hotel. Um, mm. They're great examples of the power of TikTok for upcoming uh, artists and mm. even artists that existed before but went viral from songs. Yeah. Uh, how do you think TikTok is changing the traditional way music um, industry works. Mm. First off, you know Abigail Barlow? Dude, she's my, she's my girl. She's like my favorite person she's ever. She's good. Um, no, I think TikTok in music, the music industry right now is only carried by TikTok. So mm. it's like the music that is popular right now comes from it and it's, it, there's nothing you can do to like stop that. It's mm. like, I, I think I was saying like earlier, I was just like, you can't just be a good artist. You have to like be funny or whatever, or make great content that goes along with it. And a lot of people I know are like super traditional. They're like, oh man, TikTok is like ruining the industry. It's like, nah, man, it's like, it's like progressing it to be like the next, like TikTok is like the next invention to progress it even mm. further. So it's like, yeah, you really can't do, you can't do much without, without TikTok, which I think is exciting because you have all these new people that are coming, coming up out of nowhere. And I know for a lot of people, it's really frustrating. It's like, dude, I can't, you know, make a hit without like selling my soul to the TikTok gods. <laughs> um, but it's just, it, it is what it is. I mean, you're either going to adapt to the way music is consumed now, or you're going to like stay in the past mm -hmm. and not do anything. So so much of making music now, it's like 50% music, like actually writing, recording, producing, all that stuff, and 50%
like marketing strategy mm. or yeah, marketing strategy. And in the current day marketing, the way to do it is on TikTok. Yeah, obviously. And it's free. Yeah. Right. So it's just, um, I don't even say like maybe like 30% actual music, 70% marketing, yeah. which I know for so many people it's just like, Oh dude, I just want to make music, which I definitely fall into that. Like if, in a perfect world, I could just yeah. make music and that's it. But that's not but, enough. Yeah, and I think it's really exciting, like, how different music is now than it was, like, literally, like, three years ago, which is crazy. But I don't, like, every advancement in the music, the story of music as a whole is exciting to me. Like, getting with what's happening right now, it's pretty hard to ignore, but so many people do, I feel like. Why do they do that? Are they afraid to, to, to face it? I think so. It's just, like the same reason why people are afraid to do influencer influencer marketing and like you have all these business execs who are like let's do a commercial on the news the newspaper or not the newspaper like the tv at, like during the commercials of the disney channel or whatever mm -hmm. um or like let's do a billboard or let's do whatever where like the real the bang for your buck and like the most engagement you can get is with influencer marketing, which is like obvious to, I think me and you, but it's literally like to so many people, it's like, Oh my gosh, like you would trust them. It's like yeah. so stupid, but it's like, like, that's just how it goes right now. When it's like, you have such a, an audience of like a large group of people who really care about you yeah. and your opinion and what you're into. It's different than a commercial, obviously. And it's so much more valuable way of, marketing which is so obvious to me i think but um i think it's the same with tiktok it's like if you want to promote your music don't do like the flyer around town yeah. like, hey my band's good <laughs> yeah, yeah. it's like hey you should like make a video showing off the band and make the people care about their personality and then also they make music which people will latch mm -hmm. onto if they like them it's just like a whole yeah yeah so let's have carson show um us the f most famous song that you guys request. Hopelessly devoted. Hopelessly devoted. The famous TikTok Let's request. It. Let's do it. Okay, ready? But now there's no one else that you push my love aside. I'm out of my head. Hopelessly Yeah, that's pretty much it. What, anything else you want to show us about TalkBox? Um, you think something that people will find fun or Ooh. even yourself, you're like, man, I really want to show you guys this. I think a fun part about it is how expressive it can be. So if you do like that last song I did, you can do, uh, but, oh, it's not on. But you hear I did the <laughs> yeah. thing? he's up. But no. So that's yeah. like expressive. And this is without anything. No. Oh, wow. What a big so difference. So what I'm doing is, so this knob right here is vibrato. Uh -huh. So I press this. Uh-huh. Moving it. Like making it yeah. more shaky. And this is pitch bend. So you can like, but. So without anything, but. No. With pitch bend and modulation. But. No. And it, that's beautiful too. Yeah, I mean, well. you can you can do anything. It's like super versatile, and uh, yeah, possibilities are pretty much endless. Do you think people sometimes um, confuse your voice with the talk box machine? Oh, dude, everyone like there's so many people who are like, oh, dude, I thought like you couldn't talk without the the tube in, <laughs> or I've never heard your real voice before. You sound so different, or whatever. Just they're so used to that like one sound yeah. they associate with me. Do so. they think that you that's how you actually yeah. sing too? Yeah, they're like, wow, your voice is so good. Yeah. And like you hit that note so Oh good. my gosh, that was crazy. <laughs> but no, it's literally just playing the piano. Can you give a life hack to those that are listening? If you are really good at something and you like are really passionate about something you will make it and you will find a way. That's how a lot of the people around me do stuff. So it's just like, 
I'm going to do this thing that I really love and it's going to work. And like, just, I guess, believe in yourself and like, believe that you can, you can do anything. It's so stupid. Like believe in yourself, <laughs> but I guess that's my answer. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, believe in yourself. And then, uh, what's it called? Don't get the Baconator fries at Wendy's. They're overrated. <laughs> that too. <laughs> yeah. Anything you wish to tell your younger self? The people that you're hanging out with right now or the people that you go to school with don't dictate your life, I mm. guess. Just you're going to find people later that are way better and um, you're not going to be stuck with this group of people and there are so many people who like care about you mm. that you don't even know yet. You will always find someone who's, uh, you know, the best for you, I guess. So we usually end um, our show with lightning questions. So this, Let's do it. These are fast questions. You can okay. answer them at your own pace, up to you. I will not think, I'll just do it. Kendrick Lamar or Drake? <laughs> Kendrick Lamar, I hate Drake. Who's your favorite musician? Oh, uh, Stevie Wonder. Who's your favorite TikToker? Oh, uh, my friend, uh, Charlie Curtis Beard. Three worst qualities in a woman. Oh my gosh. I don't know, it's, I love women. Yeah, but what do you not like? What, um, what certain things that you're like, man, I don't want this to, to be. Um, I, I think a red flag is someone who really likes criminal minds. They scare me. Horse girls also scare me. And girls who don't have their driver's license. I hate that. <laughs> Why? I don't know. There's so many people I know who don't have them just because they're like, Oh my God, like you can drive me around, it'll be cute. I was like, dude, you're so stupid. Get a driver's license. Smash Bros or Mario Kart? Smash. Favorite song from Kendrick? Favorite song from Kendrick is uh, Sing About Me. Keyboard or bass guitar? Uh, keyboard. Bass. Who's your favorite a- anime or what's your favorite anime? Neon Genesis Evangelion and the shoes. Money or morals? Morals. That's it? That's it, baby. We Mm. did it! (laughs) Let's go. As usual, we end Val's show with our contest where our guest brings the prize that you guys will win. Carson, tell us what they're going to be winning today. We will be giving away a custom t-shirt that I made a long time ago with my logo on it. It's super comfortable, super cute, and uh, yeah, it'll be signed by me. Mm, wow, oh, it's yes. limited edition. So all you guys have to do to have a chance to win this amazing prize is share your experience with anxiety and how you're battling it, how you're going through it, if you experience anything like that. So go ahead, leave your answer under the comments, in the comment section, under our pinned comment, um, and we will choose the winner. Um, it will be chosen by random. Yes. Bye, everybody. Bye. Good luck. Yeah. 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 Yeah.